How's it going, everybody? Nathaniel from RC Insight here, and today I am comparing the Rubik's Perplexus 2x2 Hybrid to the Rubik's Perplexus 3x3 Fusion. Now, uh, I have beat the 3x3. I have not completed the 2x2 yet, uh, but given that they're both uh, Rubik's Perplexus challenges and that they are similar in a lot of ways, I thought I would uh, compare and contrast them for you guys so that you can kind of get an idea of the differences between them and which one might be better to buy. Uh, I would like to say that I am still working on my walkthrough for the 3x3. It's coming out soon. It's just a really difficult video. It's a long perplexus. And yeah, so let's jump right into this. So the first thing you'll notice is despite this being a 3x3 and this being a 2x2, uh, these are almost exactly the same size. I think the 3x3 is just a touch bigger, but only slightly, uh, like a very marginal difference. Basically the same size, which surprised me a little bit when I got it. I figured the 3x3 would be quite a bit larger. And uh, so with that being noted, the marble and track size for both of these is also the same. Now, the 3x3 here is not really a true 3x3, it is a 3x3x1, so you can see that uh, it has three uh, nine squared sides that turn, but it obviously does not turn the other direction, it just has all on one axis. Whereas the 2x2 two two is actually a proper cube in the sense that it turns both ways, and so each square in here can have a different rotation, whereas the rotation on the 3x3 three three is fixed. Uh, lengthwise, the 2x2 two two is from 1 to 100, and the 3x3 three three is from 1 to 225, making it the largest perplexus to date. That does not mean that it takes longer to complete this one, however, uh, though there probably is a little less course in the 2x2, two two, uh, I think ultimately this is probably a longer, more difficult challenge. I have yet to finish the 2x2, two two. I have finished the 3x3. Three um, and that is because there's a lot more thought that has to go into the fact that this is an actual working Rubik's puzzle, and the diversity in obstacles here is significantly more than you get in the 3x3. Three three. So on that note, uh, the 3x3 three three in terms of obstacles is very one note. There's not a whole lot of variation. You'll notice it's uh, almost entirely flat. So uh, basically, there's, there's not a whole lot of... Uh, Normal perplexuses have tracks on all different angles. This basically only has tracks on two axes, as you can kind of tell. And uh, that takes a lot of the fun out of it for me. And most of them are just flat tracks at that. There's no one wall sections, very few butterfly sections. And the ones that there are, they're all just the same type. Uh, so there's not really a lot of variety in terms of obstacles in this. And to align the course is not that difficult either because it only spins on one axis. Meanwhile, for the 2x2 two two here, uh, much more difficult to align the course because it spins on two axes, and so it takes a lot longer to find the alignment. And, I mean, you can see just by looking at it, there's uh, much more diversity in terms of the track. Uh, it has more angles like we're used to in Perplexus. It's not just, you know, tracks that are vertical and horizontal. You can see they're all over the place. And a significantly uh, increased diversity in terms of obstacles from staircases to drop sections to one wall sections, uh, all sorts of things like that, including even some new obstacles in here that I haven't really seen before. And so this definitely takes the cake in terms of being a much more unique perplexus as well. And I think it's a lot more fun. Now, one key difference, the turning on this, like real Rubik's Cubes, it's actually good when compared to real Rubik's Cubes, but and it's spinning really well for me right now for some reason, but it can be a little finicky sometimes. Uh, right now it's, it's being great. Sometimes it can get the feel like there's a little stick to it and that can be really frustrating because you're trying to keep the ball, ball on the maze and you're like, come on, move, 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 and it won't. Uh, but like I said, it was moving really good there, so that's that's interesting. However, this one, this one spins awesome and free because it is only on the one, it only turns on the one axis, which makes sense. Uh, so there's no problems with spinning and rotating this cube, whereas this one can be a little bit tougher. You can have some stick to that. Uh, so that is another thing to keep in mind. Uh, probably the last thing that I want to draw on when speaking in comparison to these two is uh, this one technically is a proper Rubik's Cube in terms of the solving the Rubik's sides of it. So you notice all red, all green, all orange, all blue, all white, all yellow. It actually can be solved like a Rubik's Cube, but it doesn't actually rotate like a Rubik's Cube. So really solving it is no puzzle at all. Meanwhile, uh, the two by two over here 
though it does actually turn like a real Rubik's Cube, it doesn't solve like one. There's not enough colored sides, so you're never going to be able to get, you know, all blue, all red. It just doesn't work that way. It's, it's not designed that way. So there's not actually a Rubik's Puzzle to solve here, but it actually rotates like a Rubik's Puzzle. So it's kind of a give and take there. Obviously, I think this is a more fun puzzle in that regard. So overall, if I had to choose one over the other, I would say despite the hybrid being the older Rubik's Cube crossover and the Fusion being the new Rubik's Cube crossover for this year, uh, I think the hybrid is simply better. Uh, it's a good length course with diversity and obstacles and a good challenge. There's some drawbacks like how it can be difficult to rotate the course sometimes, uh, but overall I think it's a pretty fun challenge with, like I said, diversity and obstacles, and it is a true Rubik's Cube in the way that it turns and rotates. The 3x3 on the other hand, it's not a true Rubik's Cube and is really long with a noticeable lack of diversity and obstacles, which makes it just much more boring when you're going through it because you feel like, oh, I've done this several times. And the challenge from the 3x3 comes from the fact that oftentimes it is hard to see where the marble is in the midst of this labyrinth. And that's why it's been so hard for me to film my walkthrough is to get camera angles where you can actually even see where the marble is. Uh, that is a real challenge here. Whereas this one, you have no issue really tracking and following your marble because it's not getting lost in the middle. There's a big thing for it to rotate on in the middle. So that's, that's not really a concern here. Uh, if I had to make a complaint for both of them, I wish that the marble and track sizes were bigger. They're quite a bit smaller than the standard Perplexus sets, and so it definitely is a different feel, and it takes some time to adjust to it. But at the end of the day, I don't think it's bad, and I think that they're both fun challenges. But if you're looking to get one, then uh, the 2x2 two two takes the cake, especially if you're looking for an introduction into these. I think you'll find the 3x3 three three frustrating and, uh, and not a great... Uh, reflection of the perplexus games as a whole whereas the two by two is you know uh, definitely more difficult but a more diverse and a better representation of perplexus and rubik's for that matter as a whole so that is my comparison of the rubik's perplexus two by two hybrid and three by three fusion guys uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below which one you prefer which one is your favorite how you would compare the two uh, but like i said for me the clear winner is in fact the two by two hybrid if you guys like this video, if you found it useful at all, click the like button down below to show your support. Subscribe for more Perplexus videos like these. I have walkthroughs, reviews, rankings, all that sort of stuff uh, out and also planned to do in the pipeline. So if you're interested in any of that, subscribe so you can see those old videos and get notified as soon as the new ones come out. And with all that said, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.